In this short video, we're going to see how to solve equations where the variables inside absolute value signs. Now remember, what does absolute value mean? It really is the distance of the number from 0 on the number line. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and the absolute value of positive 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 12 equals 12, and the absolute value of positive 12 equals 12. So if I say that the absolute value of some number is 3, that number could be negative 3, because the absolute value of negative 3 equals 3, or it could be positive 3. So in an absolute value equation, we're going to have, again, an either-or situation. So for example, if I have inside the absolute value, the whole x minus 3, this binomial, well, it's the binomial which would either be negative 5 or positive 5. So now I'll have two small linear equations to solve to find that x could equal negative 2 or x could equal 5. Again, let's look at another example. In this case, again, I have a binomial, 2x minus 3, inside the absolute value sign. So whatever's inside the absolute value sign, that is going to equal either plus or minus what's on the other side. Now this is the simplest type of equation, where I have the absolute value sign expression on one side and a constant on the other. And really, that's what I want. So I get my two small equations separated by or. I solve them individually and get the two solutions, x equals negative 4 or x equals 7. Now I could have a, a quadratic equation or expression inside the absolute value sign. It doesn't change anything. That quadratic expression then would either be equal to 4 or equal to negative 4. Now when it equals negative 4, it turns out that uh, when I set it equal to 0, right, so for using the quadratic formula or for factoring, I want one side to equal 0, so I'll go ahead and add 4 to each side. And then it turns out that I can factor this, x squared minus x minus 2, is the product of x minus 2 and x plus 1, which gives me two solutions, x equals negative 2, or, I'm sorry, x equals 2, or x equals negative 1. Uh, for the other solution, x squared minus x minus 6 equals 4, I get a quadratic equation which would say that in order to factor it, I would need two numbers which multiply to make negative 10 and add to make negative 1. And there are no such numbers, so I'll use the quadratic formula. My a value is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 10. So be careful with those negative signs. Substitute into the formula, work that out carefully, and I get x equals 1 plus or minus square root 41 all over 2. Now, before I just start mechanically trying to solve this, let's think about this equation. I have the absolute value of 5y minus 1 equaling negative 3. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. How can you have the absolute value of a number equaling negative 3? That's impossible. There is no way you can have that situation. And so this here, the solution set is empty. No work is necessary. In our last example here, we're going to have to do a little bit more work. And the reason is that we don't have the absolute value part by itself. It's multiplied by 2, and then there's actually multiplied by negative 2, sorry. And then you have a 5 added on to that. So I have to get the 
absolute value part by itself uh, to isolate the absolute value m plus 3. And I'll do that by subtracting 5 from each side. That gives me negative 2, absolute value m plus 3 equals negative 2. So since the negative 2 is multiplied times the absolute value expression, I'll divide both sides by negative 2. And then I get the type of equation that I know how to solve, absolute value m plus 3 equals 1. That means m plus 3 equals negative 1, or m plus 3 equals 1 or after solving each one of those, I get m equals negative 4, or m equals negative 2.